always love talking to him, and he's kind enough to join us right now. There he is. Andre, are you okay, Andre? What's going on up, here? Guys? What do we got in here? I'm in. Uh, I'm doing the hyperbaric chamber. I'm, this is my Super Saiyan training. Now, um, there's a place here in Sacramento called Restore um, Restore Hyper Wellness. I come here. I do um, hyperbaric training. It's really good. So um, it's one of the only things that's been proven to reverse traumatic brain injury. Um, wow. people who have been in really bad accidents and stuff. Uh, so I use it as, um, I use it preventatively because, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but people try to hit me in the head yes. almost every day. No, but, I've, I've heard about um, this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty crazy thing. So I, I try multiple times a week to get in the chamber and, um, it's really good for you, man. It's basically, it's basically a little tank that pressurizes like an airplane, like, uh, like altitude almost. And then they just, flood you with oxygen it's really good for your brain it's really good for your body um, wow and what do you just, yeah how long are you in there for um you can do 60 or 90 minute sessions kind of depends on the on my schedule and um how about i have to use the restroom after <laughs> 60 or 70 minutes and when i'm now it's not bad but when i'm in the middle of fight camp and i'm getting like a gallon or, or i'm close to fight week and i'm getting a gallon of water in a day um being stuck in a in a pressurized bubble for 90 minutes is, um, it's a real test, but yeah, I do an hour. I do 90 minutes. I do. It just depends on the schedule and depends on how I'm feeling, but, um, it's, it's something that I'm, that I've introduced into my training. It's been really helpful. It like, uh, I'm trying to do more things to give back. You know, it's like you, you train three times a day, you bust your ass. Sometimes just taking a rest day isn't enough. Like just doing nothing isn't enough. So now my rest days, instead of just not fighting, they actually consist of, um, active recovery. You know, it's like, you can't just withdraw from the bank every single day. You got to put stuff back. You sure. got to, you got you to put stuff back in. So, um, this is one of those things. It's been good for me. And by the way, what do you do to pass the time when you're sitting in there? I read comic books. <laughs> nice. Read comic books. Yeah, yeah, I heard you listen, and Jose on I mean, the Saturday. I had no idea what you guys were talking about. I mean, all of that seemed yeah. very foreign to me, but it sounded great. Yeah. He's the man. He's super knowledgeable about, um, He's super knowledgeable about comic books. I, I really enjoy uh, Jose Young's. I don't know what you guys... He's with you guys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you're paying him, but you should triple it. You okay. guys are mad. <laughs> I'm sure. He's one of the only... He's one of the only MMA journalists I look forward to, to talking to. There's some great MMA journalists, but Jose Young's is... is uh, He's the man, dude. Um, yeah. Well, he should he should clip that and send it to the bosses. Uh, hopefully, we maybe we're not number one <laughs> pound for pound on your list, but maybe we make the top 10 back half. No, no. No, you guys are. Uh, I, I look forward to talking to you too, but you don't really want to talk to me that often. Wow. You know, we, we only we you only want to talk to me like every, I don't know, a couple of years. Jose is always excited to talk That's to me probably because we talk about comic books. I what, but we, you were it, on the show earlier this year. If it incentivizes you, I'm like a huge Attitude Era, yes, WWE fan, so we can just talk <laughs> about that. The only reason, the only reason, one of the only reasons I'm a UFC fighter today is because I genuinely believed I was going to be a pro wrestler until I was like 11 years old. Like wow. I, I believed in my heart. Like I, that's, that was my, that was what I was going to do is be a pro wrestler. And I, and now that WWE and UFC under the same that's right banner, we, we should probably do that. Cause I can fight. I can cut a promo. I can come off the top rope. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready with still chairs. Um, I honestly believe I could put on a real solid, like 15 minute match. Have like you ever right tried? Off the couch, I believe ha, have you, have you ever um, like trained? No, I did a little backyard wrestling when I was uh, nice. when I was twelve. You and doing uh, just just messing around. I I just love pro wrestling. I this entire camp I just binged through all the um, Dark Side of the Ring the Vice oh, documentary. So they're done. They're done so well. They're done so well. And the sport is just full of tragedies. It's so crazy. But um, yeah, I just like wanted to be Shawn Michaels, and then I wanted to be The Rock, and then. I realized that even though I'm Samoan, I'm not going to be 6'3", 250. So we got to play the hand we're dealt. And um, here we are fighting at 145. You know what I mean? I noticed you mentioned that in the, the post. I didn't know that you were a Samoan. Um, which which yeah. part of your family? My dad is uh, my dad is Hawaiian Samoan. So my dad's dad is from Samoa. Wow. My dad's mom is from is from Hawaii. My dad, um, my dad's, my, my grandpa, Feely, he... Um, immigrated from Samoa to uh, Hawaii and where you met my grandma. They, they had my dad and my dad's from Waianae. Um, so shout out the West side. And uh, 
then they moved to Seattle and my dad met my mom and now you guys are stuck with me. Wow. So I'm from the West coast. I'm from the West coast. I was born in Seattle and I've been raised in Sacramento and California, but my dad's from, from Hawaii now. I'm Hawaiian Samoan. So, um, and I, it's, it's crazy. I actually, my sister did a 23 and me, um, recently. And I'm, I found out like I'm, I'm Hawaiian Samoan. My mom is white. I'm uh, predominantly Irish. I believe my dad is Hawaiian Samoan, but I'm also, you know, there's Tongan, Tahitian, Maori. There's a bunch of other stuff in there. So, um, it really, it was really cool. It was really cool to see that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's something I'm very proud of. And, and, um, I'm, I got moved away from a lot of my Polynesian family as a kid. Um, but I've reconnected with them recently and taken a lot of trips out to Hawaii and I'm, I'm planning on doing a, a, a some more trip this year. And, um, it's been really good for me to reconnect with those roots. You know, it's like, sort of feels like a missing piece of me has been replaced, you know, has been, has been, um, reattached, you mm-hmm. know? Um, I was mentioning this before you, you connected here. Um, I, I never understood people who were dog people, who loved dogs, who treated dogs as one of their own, who lived with dogs. And then my family got a dog five years ago. And now I can't imagine life without a dog And the, you know, I love this dog more than anything. And so when I saw what, what yeah. happened to your dog, um, you know, my heart went out to you and I, and I really, truly felt your pain. And so I'm just wondering how difficult it was for you to deal with all of that as you're about to fight in a very important fight. Yeah, it was really tough. I, I was the same way. I didn't grow up with pets. I didn't really grow up with animals. Like it was just never, my mom just like, it wasn't really a thing. We like, we just didn't have pets, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and so I got this dog eight years ago and it, he, he became my best friend. And then, and I, I was mentally prepared for him to get old. I understood he's eight years old. I understood he wasn't young. I thought he had a few more years left. I, I understood. I, I, I had was able to wrap my head around the idea of him getting older and him passing away. I knew that that was an, an inevitability. What I wasn't prepared for was him just being gone one day. Just he, he, he dogs, dogs, they love you so much. And they're always in the, they're always in the moment. They're always happy. They're always sharing the moment. So they don't show a lot of pain and they obviously can't speak to you and articulate what they're going through. So, you know, I think it was, um, he had a tumor that had been growing for a long, for, for, for probably a long time, but, um, it wasn't something that I was aware of. So to me, it was like, you know, he went to bed Sunday night, completely fine. Um, and when I woke up Monday, I was getting ready for training and my girlfriend, Melissa was like, you know, I'm brushing my teeth, getting ready. And she's like, babe, Harley's, he's not okay. And I'm, I'm finished brushing my teeth. I'm like, what do you mean? He's not okay. And she's like, he's not moving that he's not moving. He's not breathing well. He's tremoring. You know, he was, he was visibly not okay. And so she kept an eye on him. I went to train. I came back from my training session. Mind you, this is Monday. We leave for fight week Tuesday. Wow. So I come back, I, you know, I come back from the training session and I take him to the vet immediately. It's been four hours. He hasn't moved, you know, uh, he hasn't, he doesn't have energy to get up and get treats. He doesn't want to go for a walk. He's, he's in bad shape. So I take him to the vet you know, I'm expecting him to give him some antibiotics or some, some expensive bullshit and we, you know, and he'll feel better. And the doctor, I could literally, when the doctor came back into the room, I could see on her face that it was not that. And I asked her, I, I just immediately said, it's bad, huh? She said, she shook her head and she said, yeah, she, he has a tumor that's been, that's grown very aggressively in his spleen and it's causing internal bleeding and he has, he has blood loss and, um, that's why he has low energy. And she basically referred us to a surgeon. Uh, mind you, this is again, Monday, we leave for fight week Tuesday. So I'm, I'm, it's, it's three 30 in the middle of the day. I'm on the phone with one vet who is saying, essentially one vet is saying we can do emergency surgery tonight for $10,000. It's going to be a very hard surgery on the dog. And we're not sure if it'll fix the problem. Hmm. Like $10,000. It's going to be very hard and he might not survive it. If he survives it, he will probably have to go to chemo. If you put him through chemo and the chemo has any real adverse effects, which it probably will, we'll suggest you put him down. So it was like this, it was like on one path was this long string of invasive things that would make my dog's quality of life bad. And then on the other, on literally on the other line, I have a vet saying, we can put your dog down, but our last appointment's at five. Oh. And this is three thirty in the middle of the day. So I have like an hour and a half to make a choice and, and 
say goodbye to my dog essentially. And I'm and I'm cutting weight and I'm packing my bags to leave for fight week. So I literally, I just sucked it up. I I went to I went to do cardio. I I, I went and cut some weight in the garage, rinsed off, and I had about forty five minutes to say goodbye to my dog. And then we drove him to the vet. We put him down and um, said goodbye to him and came home, packed our bags, and went to sleep. And woke up for fight week. You know, it happened like it legitimately happened like Sunday. My, my dog's like a lazy bulldog, right? So. By 10 p.m., if you don't put him in his crate, he gets up and he goes. Like right. he puts himself to bed. He's he's an old bulldog. So he got up. We were cuddling on the couch. He got up, took his ass to bed like he does every night. Told him I loved him. Locked him in his crate. Went to bed. Sunday. That was Sunday night. Everything was fine. Monday, he didn't feel good. By Monday afternoon, he was gone, man. And and uh, we didn't even have time to process it. Like we packed our shit. We got on the plane, and it was time to go to work. You know. So. Um, I didn't have any good options. It was like put him through these really hard surgeries and chemo that he might not survive and that might not fix the problem. I couldn't, I couldn't leave for a week and just leave him in pain. I wasn't going to do that, you know, and I just had to put him down. You know, it was really tough. And, um, you know, it sounds, it sounds bad, but it was harder on me than, you know, I've lost family members. I've lost friends recently. And for some reason it's, I don't know. It was just tough, man. It, it was, it was really, really tough. I didn't handle it very well. I didn't handle it as well as I thought I was going to. I put him down and I, I broke down, man. I like it. it the, the vet was great. It was very, um, it was quick. It was, it was painless. It was peaceful. He laid down and after he passed, I don't know what, I just, something switched in me and I got super protective and I just told all the staff to get away from like, you're not pick, my dogs. He's an 85 pound bulldog. He's heavy. I'm like, don't touch him. You're not dragging him through here. You're not going to drop him. I'm not letting any of you touch him. So they brought a gurney back and I scooped him up and I laid him on the gurney because I just didn't want anybody to like drop him or I don't know. It's not, it's dumb. It's dumb, but I just, I just was overwhelmed and I was just like, don't touch my dog. Even though he's gone, like I picked him up, I laid him on the gurney and they, they, they took him back and, um, yeah, he, he, that, that was the last, that was the last to get, you know? So how were you able to at least compartmentalize things? And you looked so good and you even looked to be in great spirits in the, in the presser afterwards, in the cage. Um, I know you talked about this being sort of like your, your, your new debut or another debut for you. Yeah. So how were you able to not let this break you? Um, I, I just feel like, yeah, you know, I, I, it's been a tough, I, I, uh, I had the thing with my dog, um, I also had a friend get hit. He was riding his Harley Davidson. He got, he got hit by a, an Amazon truck and died almost instantly. He was like a little brother to me. That happened at the start of the camp. Um, I'm sorry. Eight weeks out, six weeks out. Um, and there have been, a, I, I had a two weeks after that, my, my friend got hit on his motorcycle. I had another friend who I've known for 20 years pass away. He overdosed. And um, yeah, I, I've had all these things happen and, and I, I've, I've dealt with all these things and it, the only choice was either to like dwell on it and well, and, and just wallow in it and, or just hopefully take the lesson of like, none of this shit is guaranteed. Like you, you could be like, and I don't mean to be morbid, but like, this could be the last time you and I ever speak. You know what I mean? Um, you have to, none of this shit is guaranteed. And it's a cliche. People say it all the time, but you know, it, it never registered until recently where you really have to appreciate each moment. Like, we might only get to do this this one time, man. Um, and being able to do it this one time is a gift. So I went into fight week like it was my debut. I went into fight week like I'm doing everything for the first time. When I see Heidi Dean, I give her a big hug. When I shake Sean Shelby's hand, I tell him, thank you for giving me on the card. When I see my manager, Jason House, I tell him I love him for everything he's done for me. When I, when I see these people that I've seen 20 times for 20 other fight weeks, I make a point to appreciate it. When I walk that fucking, when I walk to that cage, it's the first time when I get in the cage, when I feel the canvas, when I hear the crowd, like appreciate every fucking second of it. When I win the fight and I hug my teammates and I tell my coaches, I love them. Like it just be present and be grateful and enjoy it because, you know, I, I understand that loss is part of life, but the losses I've taken recently have happened so fast that, the only, the only thing I can, the only way that I can deal with it is to just take the lesson of, of being grateful for, for right now and, 
that that's what I leaned into this fight week. So every moment of the fight and every moment of the process, even the weight cut, even the weight cut, every single piece of this fight camp and this and this fight week and this fight night, I I was great. I practiced gratitude for the and then and then sorry and then I left the arena, shook hands, laughed, hugged, said all the I love yous, got escorted from the front of New York, New York into an elevator to go back to my room i was in an elevator by myself i was finally alone for the first time the entire week and then i broke down and cried in the elevator by myself oh. <laughs> i like that guy i was yeah. able to finally get it out but it took a whole week of not being able to process it so um yeah the 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 end sequence there after you knocked out almeida a uh, very impressive sequence. Then it looked like you were going to jump on the cage. And I know you said that they, yeah. you know, they threatened to find you. And then yeah. you said, all right, all right. And then you went to the other side of the cage and you got down on your knees. Um, what, yeah. what were you thinking? What were you feeling? What were you saying in that moment? Uh, I wanted to, I, I wanted to see John Anik and Joe Rogan and Daniel Cormier. And I wanted to tell Megan Olivia uh, that I love you. And so I sat down and I wanted to, um, I don't know. It just was like the final cap on, on, like I'm in the UFC, man. I just won my UFC debut mm. and I wanted to sit, I wanted to sit and I wanted to hear what Rogan and Anik and I wanted to hear what Rogan and Anik and, and DC were saying about me and my knockout because I'm in the UFC and these motherfuckers are talking about me. And then for the next two minutes, I'm the star of the show. And I'm just taking it all in. Like I'm, this is my, I just made my UFC debut for the second time. And then I looked over and saw Megan to the left. I told Megan, Olivia, I love you. And then I got up and I screamed at my coaches and they screamed back at me. I gave them a hug and it was a, it was a perfect moment, man. It was, it was, um, it was a perfect moment. It, it was, I went to jump on the cage yeah. and then I literally yeah. thought about all the times, the whole fight week that they said they were going to take my yeah. money if I did that. So I, and then I just went, never mind, yeah. never mind. Let me, just, worth it. let me do my little let me do my little dance instead and just celebrate on the other side of the cage. The the, the factoid about uh not speaking to Rogan in ten years was wild. And then I went back and looked at everything Crazy. and it was either like you were overseas, so he's not there, yes. or did 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 that pay per view, for lack of a better word, like streak or curse, did that get to you? Did were you starting to think like, why aren't I getting these big wins on these pay per views? And sure. th they were? I mean, the, it's the whole thing, man. Like, dude, I got to the UFC at 12 and one. I cleared out the whole West coast. There was no one else to fight. When I got called to the UFC, I got called on two weeks notice. It's the only time I've ever missed weight. I was getting ready because I was so frustrated. I was they're 23 years old. I was 12, 12 and one with like however many finishes. I... I was so frustrated the UFC hadn't signed me yet. I was going from 145 to 170, and I was going to fight Max Griffin for the local 170 belt because he was the other biggest name on the West Coast. So shout out to Max Griffin. It's my, that's my buddy now. Uh, we're teammates, and I love seeing his success. He's in the UFC. He's a 170-pounder. But I was going to jump from 145 to 170 just to make a big statement so the UFC would notice me and sign me. Um, they called me in on two weeks' notice. I cut 30 pounds in like 12 days. I made my UFC debut. I won my UFC debut, my first UFC debut in 2013. I was 13 and one. Like I was the, I was that fucking kid, dude. I was like, I had a conversation with a UFC and with a, with a UFC management person um, the night before my second UFC fight, before I was going to fight Max Holloway, I was 13 and one. And they said, yeah, after you win this fight, we're gonna have a big conversation. And I didn't win that fight. And from that point on, it's been up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Like, it's been 10 years of me losing sleep at night because I know that I went from being a guy that kids, a kid that guys were real excited on and real hyped on and a prospect that was really like highly touted that was 13 and one with like 12, with like however many finishes to being a guy that people look at as like, just a UFC fighter. And that's not, I'm not a UFC, I'm not just a UFC fighter. There's nothing wrong with being just a UFC fighter, but I'm a fucking world. I'm one of the best, if not the best 45er in the world. But I'm, when I'm, I'm, when I'm in my flow, when I'm in my zone, I'm the best in the world, man. And, um, not being able to prove that 
for however long it's been has, um, you know, I think we've seen flashes of it. You know, if I'm being objective, I think we've seen flashes of it. You know, the Daniel Pineda fight is a pretty good testament to that. Um, there have been other ones, but the the, the Shaman Marais, Marais fight in Sacramento, you know, there, there have been things, but I haven't found that consistency yet. And I'm excited to do that now because it's been kind of a fucking nightmare, dude. It's been kind of a nightmare to, I, I, I'm, when people say, oh, I lost sleep or keeps me up at night. I have legitimately lost sleep and stayed up at night, kept me at myself up at night, racking my brain. Like, how did I end up an almost 500 fighter in the UFC? It's a night, it's a fucking nightmare, but I, I'm the one that's able to pull myself out of that. And the place that I found Saturday night, the place I'm at in my life now, the love and the gratitude that I've cultivated in my life, the just where I'm at, I'm able to perform how I did Saturday night for the rest of my career. And I just, I can't wait to show it for free. For me, fighting was always about love. Like no one loves you the way they love you after you win a fight. And I was 19, like fighting at Indian casinos for 500 bucks, fucking stealing groceries, like putting gas in my Cadillac fucking from my, the, the ash, the change in my ashtray, like struggling to make it. But the reason I fought was because no one loves you the way they love you after you win a fight. Strangers are cheering and people hug you and everyone loves you. And you get to be the man for those five minutes after the fight. And I was chasing that for so long. And now I'm not chasing that anymore because I've cultivated love in my life. I have so many people that I love and so many people who love me and, and I'm just such a healthier, stronger, hopefully better person that my whole my whole view has changed. My whole motivation has changed. My whole driving force is so much more powerful and, and, and authentic now because, you know, I'm chasing, I'm chasing different things. So I was just going to ask, like, what do you have to do to get back on or, or go on a streak and not go up and down? And then you just answered it right there. It's, it's, you found the thing that was sort of holding you back, right? You were doing it for maybe the yeah. wrong reasons. And now, now that you've unlocked this, this is the because we've seen guy we've seen Masvidal who was a five hundred fighter and then he explodes. We've seen yeah. Oliveira five hundred fighter and he explodes. You feel like that's around the corner for you, in your heart. You feel this. I feel like I know for a fact. I know it in my heart. I know it. It's it's, it's not around the corner. It's here, man. I'm gonna try to get right back in the cage. I I felt so good. I haven't felt that good in the cage, moving, seeing everything feeling everything since I was 19 years old and I can't wait to do it again, man. I'm, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm so excited to just have fun again. I love fighting. I, I'm, I'm a born fighter. And for whatever reason, I kept just piling all this shit on, like leaving a legacy. And I wanted people to know I was one of the best ever. And I want to make all this money and I want to prove this point. And I want to fucking, I want to do I, all this external validation bullshit. And like, it's not that man. It's just a fight. I've been fighting my whole life. I was getting in before I was getting paid for fights. I was getting fights uh, fucking behind the school. And then I started getting paid a couple hundred bucks for fights. I started getting paid a couple thousand bucks for fights. And now I'm getting paid six figures for fights. But it's like, it's cause I love this shit. Like I love to do this. There's nowhere else I'd rather be than in front of thousands of people on a Saturday night getting in a fight. So why, why attach all this extra bullshit? Like, it's not a job. It's not, it's not like a career where you're fucking grinding for this, this like corner office. Like, dude, it's fun. I love this shit. So now that I'm back to that, I've just kind of circled back to, to, to where I was when I started. And it's, it's a, it's a beautiful feeling, man. I, like I have just an immense gratitude for where I'm at right now and the people who helped me do it. And, and, and I can say this for the first time in my life, I have an immense gratitude for not only the people who got me here, but for myself. Like I have, the, for the first time in my entire life, I look at myself in the mirror and I go like, I love myself. I, I, I'm proud of myself. And there's no other time in my life where I would have been comfortable saying that to people publicly. I, I thought, I used to think that shit was corny. I used to think it was lame. Like I love myself. I, I'm a fan of myself. I'm a good person that treats people well. And now that I have that, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think there is a, I don't think there is a, a limit. I don't think, 
I don't think there is a ceiling. I couldn't be happy for you, man. Uh, I, I honestly, I remember that debut in Thank Houston you, like it was yesterday. Uh, Melendez and Sanchez fought on that card. That was a crazy card yeah. at the Toyota Center. It was a great card, man. And to see your maturation, your evolution, and as I said before, I'm, I'm sorry if you think I, I don't reach out enough, but I truly. No, I'm just giving you shit. But I, I really know. do I'm look forward shit, to buddy. talking to you because you're so Thank insightful, you so much, you're man. so thoughtful, you're so introspective. You you wear your emotions on your sleeve. I'm genuinely you, happy for your success, and uh, I can't wait to see what 2024 and beyond brings to you. So uh, thank you so much, man. Congrats. I'm sorry again for for your losses. Hang in there. Good. Much love, man, what, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Real quick, last yeah, question: yeah. What what kind of dog did your family get? Uh, we have a Bernadoodle. Are you familiar with that? Oh, like like a a like Bernese a mountain Bernese dog slash poodle with a love that and love that. She is incredible. Her name is Macha, like yeah. the T. And uh, uh, yeah. just like I come home now and I have three kids, no one and, and a wife, and uh, they either like they couldn't care less that I'm home. This dog is yeah. acting like she hasn't seen me in 10 years. It's, it's the greatest can't thing. Believe it. Yes, it's, it, they can't believe you made yes. it back home. It's right? incredible. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, uh, I beautiful. love that, brother. Well, uh, Take care, man. I wish you the best. And uh, again, I'm sorry for the losses, but congrats on the win and uh, happy holidays to you and, and all your family and friends. Thanks, appreciate you. Thanks, boys. All Bye, right, dude. there he is. Andre Touchy Feely, what a guy! I could talk to that guy uh, all all show. Uh, just such a fascinating guy, and uh, like I said, wears his heart on his sleeve. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You could get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.